the anti-colonial movement uh, in Africa has always been emphasizing the role of men. The contributions of women are often ignored and um, rarely discussed. The opera is about uh, a woman, Fun Milayu, who uh, challenged uh, British colonialism in Nigeria, in Yoruba land. Fun Milayo um, has learned that the king is trying to raise taxes, um, which heavily affects the market women. So she rallies them all together, and so the point is for us to overthrow the king or lower the taxes. The authorities neglected positions of traditional female power. Um, you need to lower these taxes. If you don't do those things, then the king at the time, the Yala Oba Alade, who I'm playing the spokesperson for, will have to abdicate. And nothing like that had ever happened before. It was a strike, so it covers a strike. Um, and it's, it's really fun, <laughs> it's really fun. It was uh, a very unique uh, movement, and I thought that uh, it's a story uh, that is topical at this point in time and deserves to be told uh, using the medium of music and, and drama and dance. This is bringing a tradition uh, and a, a, an art form that is ancient uh, from a Yoruba courtly tradition into the modern day. So I think some of the most interesting work that we're doing in the orchestra is finding the ways in which we can use that traditional form in combination with the Western orchestra that I represent. It is like all the moving parts. It has art, it has dance, it has music, it has just acting. So it's like all the great like uh, uh, things we do for entertainment all sort of packed into one. And it's live, right? So there's there's that element where it's, you know, it's not this pre-recorded thing. So it's, it's happening for you in the moment. Many of my students are not even music students. Uh, and yet, within a period of, I don't know, four, five, six weeks, they are already bonding together to create uh, this work. The course kind of like took us through the history of African music, so like ethnomusicology, and then kind of like interwove itself with the opera. It's definitely a great opportunity to learn about um, African music, African dances, and also the culture. So the course is mainly made up of two parts. Um, the first part is about the theory of the opera. So a kind of um, intellectual and academic and cultural uh, preface to the uh, rehearsals. Um, and then in the second half of the semester, we then go fully production, productional. And it made me want to learn more about resistance movements and, you know, cross socioeconomic solidarity. What was really interesting to me was the, like, the, the bonds of solidarity she could form with women like her who received like, a formal education um, and market women who may, may or may not have received that formal education but could bond over that oppression um, and could stand together as a united front. We, I feel like I learned a lot about um, the culture of music and how like every um, music is the most important part. Like everyone should be musical in some way it feels like. If you aren't, you should like learn or like even like dancing or storytelling, like that's very important within the culture. What we do um, is to bring together students and professionals uh, to work together. So there is also the, the pedagogic side to it, for professionals to mentor uh, students. And I remember very vividly one student talking about Fumilayo as a historical figure and how she relates to Fumilayo as a, you know, as a person of color that's inspirational for her also as a student of color who can look up to Fumilayo as a, you know, a historical influence. It's an African opera and uh, I'm like from Ethiopia, so it's, I wanted to learn more about African history. The, hearing about women fighting against injustice during the colonization has really been a fun experience. We had these uh, reflections that we had to write just on some readings. Um, that we ended up discussing in class. And then eventually he started introducing um, the music. A lot of people might not realize how much the conductor is actually working with us on the stage live. So, it, you know, he's not just up there, you know, counting away for us. He's really supporting. He's really giving us sort of a connection to him. He's making sure that we stay on, on task if we make mistakes or 
um, or he makes sure that the orchestra is breathing with us and moving with us and it's, it's really connected. We have to literally count and feel the beat in a different way. We have to listen to each other in a different way. Uh, and, you know, with respect to the text, we're singing in Yoruba. So, you know, the chorus members have to, you know, uh, get our mouths and apparatus around uh, the, the, the unfamiliar sounds and to make sure that we do justice to the language and to the words and to the story. This is my first time hearing the Kaviyesi Overture um, where I would actually be singing because I'm on stage at that point in time. Um, and when I heard it, I was thinking to myself, oh, this is my favorite thing. This is my favorite thing in the world. The singing is done together with Nigerian talking drums and it really is unique and I've not heard anything quite like it. We have a character, the district officer, who is sent directly from the British to sort of watch over the king and sort of make sure that the king is listening. And so whenever that character comes in, you hear more classical canonized harmonies that are very indicative of Western music. Um, whereas when my character shows up or market women are on stage or the king is speaking, you feel a lot more of the polyrhythms happening underneath the instrumentals and in the chorus chorus parts. Some of our actors are getting into their costumes and our amazing costume designer Bola, um, who is our composer Bode's wife, is helping. Um, and everyone looks amazing. It's very exciting. I haven't seen all these costumes yet. But then as well actually got the costumes from Nigeria. So everything was made there and they brought it here. So kind of like helping put like the set putting the pieces together, helping people like find which ones for which and like actually helping them like tie the gillies and the wrappers because people don't really know how to tie them. My most exciting job is during the performances and during tech I'm in the booth calling cues um, so all the lighting and the sound things that are happening is because I say go um, and that's my favorite part of the job. I'm sort of pushing myself into these final steps of like memorizing chunks of dialogue and getting you know last intervals that I'm not understanding in my pieces. Um, it definitely still feels like a challenge, um, but I think that the way that Bode has set this up so that you have a mentor in your role, it's double casted, and I think that has been the most instrumental part in me sort of saying, I can take this on. I was doing something like this back in Nigeria and seeing it being done in this place, I'm so happy. And being part of this, I was excited when I was called to do this, when he's using the African idioms, the Yoruba idioms, and also the Western idiom, fusing them together, try as much as he can to make good music out of it. It's, it sparkles, it sparkles. Bode was really um, adamant about everyone getting a chance to sing and to learn the Yoruba lyrics and to feel the polyrhythms of West African drumming and those sort of atonal harmonies that we're getting to experience some of us for the first time. What Professor Omojola is doing with the students is that he's introducing the, the, the class to a myriad of artistic expressions from different cultures that a lot of our students are not exposed to. Um, Yoruba art is very rich and so we're really excited to be sharing that with our students. He's very comforting to his students and he has a, a connected relationship with them and he teaches them music in interesting ways that um, are not really standard like you wouldn't get like in a classical music class so that's fantastic too a lot of call and response when he's teaching them melodies and things. We have another dress rehearsal it's coming along very well I think this was a very good run that we just had and we're really looking forward to sharing with everyone in two days time. Everyone gets along. Like we did this like exercise in class, like we had to like memorize each other's names, which was really fun. I feel like you don't really get to like interact with your classmates to this level in a lot of classes. So that's something I really enjoyed. I think I feel this amazing sense of pride and of excitement because you know this is something that I, I always feel like you know where else can I possibly do this right? And it's all because I have this fantastic colleague Ola Bode Omarjola here and uh, a, literally a master musician who is bringing a hundred, you know, multi-hundred year old, half millennial old tradition into the modern world together with us here in this setting at Mount Holyoke. And I feel very, very fortunate to be the conductor that he happens to be in the area that was called on to do this work.